evening, church family. Welcome to the Upper Room Live on Holy Monday. I know you all are so accustomed to having us on Thursday night, but we couldn't wait. We couldn't hold our excitement. And I had to bring a few of my sister ministers with me on tonight as we celebrate, honor Holy Week and also continue to celebrate Women's Her Story Month. And so very excited to share with you all about a special premiere that is going to take place on this Thursday during our regular time. Hey, Sherry, <laughs> doing our regular time right on cue for Empower Her, uh, the last, uh, the last, the seven last sayings, excuse me, of Jesus Christ, the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. And so we're very, very excited to share with you on tonight, again, a special edition of Upper Room Live, Making Her Story, uh, Empowered Behind the Scenes, and um, we're powered by Eastern Star Church. Our senior pastor is Pastor Jeffrey A. Johnson, Sr. We are one church in three locations and online. We are in Indianapolis, Indiana, and also in Fishers, Indiana, and we are just so delighted on tonight to share with you all and uh, about our reflections on Palm Sunday. We had an amazing time, all three worship services and also online. And then here we are on Holy Monday and we have a lot to share with you all. So we wanna jump into it and get right to it. Family, you know how we do it. Let me know who's in the room on tonight. Our Fishers fam, uh, let me know when you make it. Uh, Cooper Road, I see that number going up, our Cooper Road crew. Don't let your campus pastor down. Now, she's on here tonight. Don't let her down. Don't let her down. <laughs> and then main attraction. Let Hey, where you at? Where you at? Let me know that you are in the upper room on tonight. And any of our online ministry friends, uh, let us know. Shout out your church, your pastor. Let us know what city uh, which state, which state, even which country you may be tuning in with us because we are accustomed to having our friends with us from all the way down south in Mississippi and all the way around the world in Kenya. So let us know that you are connected with us and we want you to like, love and share. Thank you, Lisa. Way to represent main campus. We made it first tonight. <laughs> Cooper Road, I see you, I see you, I see you. And Fishers is in the building on clockwork, on clockwork. We love it. We want you to like, love, and share this live. It's Upper Room Live, making her story edition on tonight. And I'm so glad to have you with us. I'm Reverend Dee Dee. And let's go around the space on tonight. We have with us Reverend Andrea Lewis. She's going to be Reverend tonight, you all. You're going to find out in just a minute. Reverend Andrea Lewis, the Cooper Road campus pastor, is with us. We also have Minister LaGuan Epperson, our chief ministry officer. We also have Reverend Sandra Keith with us as well, represented for Ignite on tonight and always. And then none other than the directress. That's how I've heard her uh, addressed as such in different spaces. <laughs> Our Minister of Music, Director, Choir Director Extraordinaire, Miss Sherry Garrison, uh, who leads us at our Cooper Road campus, but heads up the team for more than um, going on 36 years this year at the <laughs> Eastern Star Church and just delighted to have her. So I want to toss the mic to Sherry because it is Holy Week. So that means it's a lot going on and happening. And uh, we were talking about and thanking God for that song called When Sunday Comes. Yes. So, <laughs> so Sherry, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> oh, I am doing wonderful. I am excited about what God is, first of all, has already done leading up to Palm Sunday. But what he's going to do this week um, in regards to um, what we're about to share with the, I always say it wrong, the her story. You know, um, and I'm glad that I was able to be a part of that and be able to share musically and what God has for Eastern Star Church and not just for our ministry, but for, um, you know, uh, for the kingdom. And I'm thankful that, you know, we were able to collaborate on this and be able to do what God has called for us to do to make this be a blessing to the people. For sure. Thank you, Sherry. And, and as you mentioned, collaboration, it definitely took all hands and hearts, yes. and, um, creativity um, for the production in itself and everything behind the scenes and just how God made it all come together. And in the year of connection and yes. this women, her story month, I mean, women's empowerment month, it, it just everything just aligned. Right. And so. Yes. 
we thank God for that. And we want to talk about how this seed was actually planted because we've been wanting to, it's been a desire, my understanding, yeah. um, for some time to uh, have a seven that seven saying service. Yes. And so I want you and Sandra, Reverend Sandra, to talk a little bit about that because this has been like in the making for some time. Well, um, I know um, Pastor San um, Reverend Sandra remembers um, during COVID, we kind of had already um, envisioned doing this. Um, we had pulled it together. You know, we prayed about it. We kind of you know, everything was aligned, but it never came to fruition. But over the years, even since then, I kept saying, I know this is something that God wants, not only for Eastern Star Church, but for, again, the kingdom. And um, we even then, me and her were collaborating, um, pulling it together with some other people, Janae Downs and some other people. And, you know, but, you know, God's timing is always it. I've always said, you know, pastor says it all the time. He may not come when you want it. But he steps in and he shows you the right time for ministry. And this is the time. And we're just thankful that we were still able to be in place for what God, for the vision that God had shared with us. What was it? Three or four years ago. Yes. Uh, yeah. About three yes. or four years ago, the vision really? he gave to us. But it, it still happened. And I'm thankful that we were still able to be a part of that. Yeah. And that we were obedient and we didn't give up. Yes. Um like you we said, kept bringing it back almost every year. We would, yeah, every we would year. kind of throw it back out there because, you know, when God shows you something, like I said, sometimes you you like, why not now? But yeah. if he keeps saying it and you keep putting it out there, you know, when the time is right, he opens up the door and we mm -hmm. were there to still be able to walk through the door and share the vision. Amen. Amen. Y'all made me think about there's a woman in the Bible that was like that who uh, was honored for her persistence. So yeah, that was, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Well, uh, you know so what? And I, I think, and, and you know, and it's such an honor that our pastors supported this when we first mentioned it. Yes. And 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 everything just lined up. It wasn't the right timing, but it is the right time. Such a time as this. Yeah. And so he God gets all the glory and the honor. You know, not in our time, but in His time that His will will be done. Right. Yes, and you another woman in the Bible, Queen Esther. Come on, y'all. Yes. 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 <laughs> at the appointed time, at the appointed time. Uh, well, we thank God because, like you said, at the appointed time and an anointed time, yes, and so as well, and such a time as this, as you mentioned. And so then enters um uh, Minister LeGuan Epperson, as you spoke about, and Reverend Andrea, because again, about timing, alignment. Uh, and then being in the right place, in the right position and exercising what we're talking about, empower, being empowered, having right. the authority. Right. And so enters Minister Laguan, Reverend Andrea comes alongside. And let me back up. Let me insert my, myself, if I may, because yes. when it came back to the table and um, we were talking about the timing and I had we had shared the proposal and under my the leadership with Minister Laguan and shared the proposal and it dawned on, it was in a conversation. I, I must shout out uh, Pastor Daniel Iman Johnson. I have to shout him out as a supporter um, and as our associate pastor of preaching and teaching. And he said, and I was thinking about, you know, this and not knowing some of the backdrop, not knowing all the details of the, the backstory as um, Sherry and Reverend Sandra has shared. And I was thinking about who this lineup, who could be in this lineup. And so I'm thinking, okay, all three campuses and we got to get preachers and, and all of that. And it was Pastor Daniel who said, he said, well, you know, Easter is still in Women's History Month. And I said, hmm. <laughs> and I, started, I said, you know what? And I started praying about it, putting the proposal together. Pat, then um, that's when... Um, God connected Sherry and I in heart and conversation. Circle back around. Now enters Minister LeGuan. Reverend Andrea comes alongside. And this is where I'm going to toss the mic to uh, Minister LeGuan to just talk about from your perspective as the, the um, chief minister, chief ministry officer, and our vision and mission being evangelism and discipleship. How, you know, just talk about now your you know, in retrospect, and now here we are at this moment and what it means for Empower. Hold on. Wait, start again for us, Mr. Glenn. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. 
Yep, you're good. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Reverend Didi, for um, inviting us on and giving us this opportunity to share this information. Um, I am so glad that God's timing was within my time here at Eastern Star Church. You know, God has blessed us with so many gifted preachers and teachers of his word. And so um, to be able to pull that together with our own is just amazing. And so to him, we give all glory, honor, and praise. And we are grateful to our senior pastor, Pastor Jeffrey Johnson Sr., who said, of course, you know, he has always and continues to be a great support to uh, women in ministry. And um, we are just grateful to be able to do um, this work. You know, um, although it's a tradition, it is so very much needed, right? Yeah. And so to be able to use our own ministers, our own ordained preachers, women, to bring forth the word in such a powerful way, we are just truly grateful. So I feel privileged and honored that the Lord would honor me in my role to allow for this to come along um, at this time. So I praise God for each and every one of the um speakers who are going to be sharing the word of God on Thursday. You all do not want to miss this. That I'm is super right. excited about what God is doing in the lives of all of those who will be bringing forth the word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for your leadership, Minister Laguan, and your support. We appreciate you. And again, as we said, at such a time as this, in the year of connection, Yes. In the month of women empowerment. Uh, we praise God for each of you. And Reverend Andrea, so I want to talk about it because I know Sherry has to make a move. So when we said it was time to find preachers and it was time to find, well, the way we said it, Sherry, we said preachers and yes. singers and, a, and some brother and a few good brothers too. And so uh, Reverend Andrea, let's talk about that process and just coming alongside as um, the Cre the creative process of it all was Sherry and I, you know, just connecting in heart and prayer, creativity and vision. And, um, you know, this is who we believe, like we, we talked about for such a time as this, uh, because we have a wonderful pool of, of female clergy at our church and um, so many people. And so when we had to narrow it narrow it down. Reverend Andrea, just talk about that reflection, you know, when presenting that and just speaking to, you know, your role with our ministers in training, along with Pastor James Collins, our Fishers Campus pastor, and just um, give us your your behind the scenes experience, um, you know, at the proposal phase of, of this process. Yeah, so actually, I'm grateful to God that, you know, he stirred this vision within you, uh, Sherry, Reverend Sandra, uh, Reverend Didi, uh, to bring something new to light. And so as we were considering who would participate, uh, definitely wanted all three campuses to be represented. And so thankfully the women that women preachers that were invited uh, said, yes, there's a mix of experienced uh, people that are experienced ministering in this way at Eastern Star Church, and then some that are less experienced. And so, it just lets me know that there's room for everybody, right? And so, you know, just like when the women at the tomb were the first to preach the word, that was something new. It didn't discount the old. It didn't, you know, in any way disparage the, the former way of, of doing things. It was just an invitation for more people to participate because there's so many voices that God wants to use to get the gospel out and we're all needed and it's very, very important. And so this is just exciting, very exciting. Very exciting. Sherry, um, we have no lack of singers at all. There is not a <laughs> no of singers. Uh, so talk about, you know, from that standpoint with the planning and the process with the music ministry and, and their excitement and engagement with this process. Well, you know, once you and I had really locked down, you know, what we really thought that God wanted. And, you know, I shared what songs I thought fit what we were talking mm -hmm. about yeah um it was you know i always say that god always makes things happen when he wants it to happen and so all i did was i reached out to first of all michael houston um you know to to 
record the videos. Mm -hmm. And then I reached out to George Tyler, who like both of them during COVID for almost two years, this is what we did. All three of us got, you know, right. we, we made sure that there was music and worship prepared during COVID. So, you know, when we started pulling this together, I was like, hey, this is not new to us. You know, we know how to do this. Let us make this happen. They immediately said, yes, what do we need to do? You know, we worked out the calendar and we set that up. And then I just reached out to singers. The thing was, you know, it was like I, I created vocal tracks. I sent it to them. We, we practiced just before we recorded the songs and then we recorded them. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, but I mean, you know, I also challenged them that we have to connect ourselves to Christ, whether anybody's in the sanctuary or not when we're doing it and, and what you feel and what you see and what you hear when they're up there singing, that was real. Um, Minister Didi, you were there. Uh, I mean, a couple of times we couldn't even move on with the next song to record mm -hmm. because the anointing of God fell in that place. It did. And, 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 you know, and he was glorified. The people were blessed and um, Sharon Rimmer, um, everybody knows she, you know, she has a powerful anointing. Um, Carl Hearn, who is the Fisher's campus director, he's leading a song. He blessed us. And then we brought in Destiny Fitzpatrick, Woo! um, who is a local artist here. Um, and, and whenever I call her, um, for anything, normally the answer is yes. And I'm always thankful because yeah. she has such a powerful anointing on her life and that she's always willing to share it with Eastern Star Church. So we were blessed by three powerful vocalists, but all those singers from the Fishers campus, the Cooper campus and the main campus, um, of course, you know, because our music ministry is so big and vast, we could not invite everybody um you know for the recording but we chose people from each campus to represent um, the ministry and they came in ready to worship god and praise god and they you know they shared their gift with the ministry and it was just a blessing so i'm thankful to everybody you know who lifted their voice who played an instrument who recorded but who was willing to give god their best to yeah. worship him yeah for sure and I, I have to echo, we're talking about empower behind the scenes. Um, as Sherry mentioned, you took me in that moment. Um, like you said, Carl came out and led us in a dynamic um, yes. praise and worship song to set the tone. And then um, I think it, it was, I think my moment was after Calvary. I think yours was after for God so loved the world. <laughs> one, one of the ways, but it hit her, and then it hit me. And I remember when we when we walked out the sanctuary, me and Sherry just had a moment where we looked at each other and we said, we just knew what it meant. We said, Yeah, God is in this. Yes. God is God is in this. We got something, and right. it's just gonna be amazing. If you remember that, we were walking yeah. out that night, and that's all we said. We was and like, that's we we were like speechless. God we like, placed his hand, and his anointing was on it. And even the singers felt it, you yeah. know, everybody in that room, you yeah. know, even the, the when the preachers, you know, when we recorded the preachers, when you hear them, you know what I'm saying? God, you can tell that God is in it and yeah. that's what it's all about. And that, yeah. you know, that he, that we represent him and the story of his resurrection, that's not right. only in the preached word, but through song. Oh, sermon and songs and sermon sermons. and songs. Oh, yeah, and sermons and songs and songs and sermon. Yeah, and that really is what embodies Empower. You all do not want to miss it. Again, we are tuned in to the Upper Room Live, powered by Eastern Star Church, and we are talking about our special premiere that is going to take place on this Thursday at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube during our regular time. We, we couldn't wait. We had to come on tonight <laughs> to encourage you all to save the date, to set your alarms. You do not want to miss in power. And also we want to remind you that during while we will have songs and we will have sermons, we are also going to have communion and we yeah. want you to join us. So it is Monday, Thursday. And um, in observance of that, that 
was the evening um, when Jesus Christ, he had supped the last supper up in the upper room uh, with his 12 disciples. And he, there was, um, he washed their feet and he, his feet, their feet, and he gave them the command to love one another. And so we are going to take the time on Monday, Thursday to have communion together uh, in observance of that. And we want you to make sure that you prepare your elements. I, we're not trying to trigger you from pandemic, <laughs> from the pandemic, but we want you to prepare your elements at home and have communion service with us. Um, again, as we commemorate uh, Christ washing the feet of his disciples, having that last supper in the upper room with them, and, and what that night meant. This was the night before he was going to be falsely accused and tried and crucified for you and I as a perfect sacrifice. And so we wanted to commemorate that moment and share it with you in the upper room. And Reverend Andrea Lewis and Reverend Sandra Keith, they led us in that time of communion. And I want you all to share your reflections uh, about that moment moment during production. You know, Dee, Dee it was hard um, trying to stay focused because you start thinking about what all this entailed and what Christ went through. At least that's what I was thinking. And um, yeah, and I'm just, just reflecting on how troubled his heart must have been to know this is going to be my last time with these men. Mm -hmm. that God has given me mm -hmm. and to share this with them and to be obedient to God's word. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that hit me more so than it has ever hit me before the wow. obedience of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And that we get, we get the opportunity to do this in the remembrance of everything that he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every time we have communion, we can remember what he did, the sacrifice he made for us, the yeah. obedience he did doing God's will and not his own. Yeah. 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 Reverend Andrea. Yeah. It just calls me to reflect on the weight of what Christ did. You know, one, one thing we say during communion is without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. That was the way that God saw fit to redeem mm -hmm. us from sin. And that's a very weighty matter. That's, that's, that's the only way it could have happened. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, you know, I reflect on when we take communion is the, the tremendous sacrifice that he made. And we, you know, people might not understand why it had to be that way, but God says, this is the way I redeem you. This is the way I redeem you. And mm -hmm. he, he was not, he did not withhold his son, but he said, I love you. I love you that much that yeah. I offer him freely. Ooh, my yeah. God. So I had a moment of reflection and I want Minister Laguan to speak to this uh, because we had prayer together. Uh, imagine a room full of women <laughs> who love God, love God's people, love God's word. Uh, and we had prayer before we did the recording. Uh, we went out to do the recording together for the, for the words on that night and then for communion. And so Minister Laguan, can you share some insight to your reflection? Because you, you came through to show your support and stand with us. And you were a part of that moment of prayer. Can you, you draw on any uh, reflection of that time? Yes. Um, it was really a beautiful sight to see, but I want to first go back and talk about communion. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to partake in communion. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, as often. As often. So it doesn't have to be weekly or monthly. As often, right? It's a privilege. And so I just praise God for that. And to go back to the night where, um, when the recording happened, to be in the room with all of the women of God who had prepared their hearts and their minds and they were centered in on him. His presence was there. It was in the room. And as we prayed together to um, acknowledge God and for what he was allowing us to do, um, it was beautiful. I mean, for me to look at all of the ladies that were there and to see them um, just humbled and thankful for the opportunity to participate in such a beautiful expression of our love for him and the acknowledgement of who he is and what he did for us. 
just amazing. And I'm just so humbled and thankful to um, be a part of a church that would support, uh, be a part of a family that um, honors each other um, and support each other. Everybody was in there together supporting each other. It was beautiful. That's what heaven is going to be like. And that's what life should be like daily. That love and that support. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that reflection. I'm I'm in the moment, you all. And family, I'm telling you, you do not want to miss Empower Her, the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ, powered by Eastern Star Church online ministry. I promise you don't want to miss it. We want you all to stay tuned. We want you to like, love, and share this live. We have more to come because now we're going to talk to the preachers. But we wanted to say thank you to those who have helped to plant the seed, to water the seed. And now we believe God to give us the increase and for him to get all the glory. And so thank you all so very, very much to, again, Minister Sherry Garrison, our Director of Music, Cooper Road Campus, Reverend Sandra Keith, representing for Ignite uh, at all times. And shout out to Ignite Children's Ministry and um, Teen Ministry as they had their uh, True Resurrection Story production on Saturday. So they got us started. They got us started. (laughs) Amazing job. Amazing job. And again, thank you to Reverend Andrea Lewis, our Cooper Road Campus Pastor and our co-facilitator of Ministers in Training. And Last but not least, Minister LeBron Epperson, our Chief Ministry Officer. We thank you all so much for your leadership. We thank you for your support and uh, being a part of this very historic uh, occasion in the life of our church. And uh, as we make our own history, our own her story at Eastern Star Church, we love you. God bless you, family. All right, let's get ready. Thank you. Let's get ready for our second segment, uh, you all. We want you to like, love, and share this live. Let me know. Drop in power in the comments if you can't wait for Thursday night and you're going to let somebody uh, know that we are observing Holy Week. Uh, Please, please, at Eastern Star Church. So please, please, please drop in power in the chat if you plan to uh, be online on Thursday night at 7 p.m. We also want to remind you that we want you to catch the rebroadcast as well on Good Friday. So take the time between 12 and 3 p.m. Come on, Bible uh, readers, if you know what that means. We want you to catch the re-air even as well on um, Good Friday. But the premiere, we want you to be front and center for the premiere of Empower, the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on Thursday night at 7 p.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube uh, via the Eastern Star Church platforms. I see you. I see you. It says Empower, 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 Empower. Yes, yes, yes. And we want you all to let everybody know to join us, please. Everybody is welcome. And again, as a reminder, make sure you prepare uh, to take communion with us as well. Make sure that you have your Monday, Thursday communion prepared as well, all right, for um, Monday, Thursday and during that uh, premiere. And I saw a question in the chat about the lyrics uh, being on the screen. We want to encourage you all to use the closed caption feature. You can access that via the settings for your Facebook or your YouTube. And so make sure that you um, you use that function on those platforms for closed caption. All right. And so, again, um, we have some beautiful classic um, gospel classics that are going to be rendered uh, during the production. We're very excited again about having. Uh, Destiny Fitzpatrick with us. She is actually a national gospel recording artist who is locally based and a friend of our ministry. And I promise she's going to bless you along with Sharon Rimmer, uh, one of our very own. And as Sherry mentioned, Carl Hearn, uh, our Fishers Campus Director. Um, and I promise you all, the music is going to bless you. The sermons are going to bless you. There's also uh, other instrumentation that is going to take place throughout the um, production as well. Um, And so you'll recognize some of those classic songs as well. And I, I just I'm telling you, I'm guaranteeing you, you are going to be blessed. And so now we want to uh, have the preachers, 
are in the house. I think uh, I, I see a few that have logged on here and just start bringing them on the screen as they log in, as they come on. Let's see. All right. I see you. I see you. We have the few. <laughs> have a, a few with us and uh we'll have more that are, that will be joining us as well but i'm so glad to see my sister ministers they look well rested um after that week of production <laughs> that we had <laughs> and um and it was such a whirlwind um but i'm so thankful for your yes i'm thankful for your yes and so um, let's see. I'm going to try to remember this order on tonight. Uh, the first word, the first word was brought to us by Reverend Tina Gwynn. How are you on tonight, ma'am? Praise the Lord. I am just fine. Thank you for asking. I'm glad you're here on tonight. And then we had the second word, the second word by Reverend Janae Downs. <laughs> How are you, ma'am? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on this evening. And the second word is a word for the people. Yes. I'm excited to be on. Come on, a word for the people. Mm -hmm. And then the third word, <laughs> Reverend Barbara A. Walker. Yes, uh, indeed. Her ESC Christian <laughs> Education uh, and Discipleship. Uh, she's the Director of Christian Education and Discipleship and also the Staff Liaison for ESC Online Ministry. How are you this evening, ma'am? I am well. I am as excited as you are. I'm ready. <laughs> to see the final production. I, I I was so blessed by the experience. I just can't wait to see full, the full edification of everything that was done. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we have the, we're going to jump, we're going to jump to the other half uh, <laughs> of the words with the sixth word, Reverend Kyle, <laughs> how are you on this evening, my sister? I am great. I am excited to be on here with all my sisters today. Good. We are so delighted to have each of you and representing uh, for all three of our campuses and our online family as well. And uh, ESC online production, just keep popping everybody on the screen. Uh, all the preachers, all the preachers, uh, pop them on the screen as they enter. Hello. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Good. You, you're fine. Go ahead and get situated, Reverend Hazel. You're good. <laughs> the I don't know how to work this thing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Uh, let's see. The fourth word. You were the fourth word. Yes. Yes. The fourth yes. word. The fourth word. The fourth word. Go yes. ahead. You can, you can get yourself situated. You can get yourself situated. In fact, ESC Online. Yep. Let's pull her back. Get her some support, and we'll have her come back out. But let's share some reflections. Uh, let's share some reflections. I want to start with the first word. Reverend Tina Gwynn, what, what are your first thoughts and reflections after getting the, the invite, getting the call, giving, a God, giving God a yes to this project and preparing and then starting us off as the first word? Give some reflections in that regard. Uh, reflection on, on just receiving the invitation, I counted it as an honor from God and honor from the church. I, I counted it as a divine assignment uh, that women were going to be out front doing this uh, for such a time <clears throat> as this. And so with it being uh, Women's Empowerment Month, um, just trying to prepare the word for that. I preached a couple of places and always had a word, but never had the first word and never had it ready. And so I had to literally prepare something uh for that uh first word uh, but the production itself and and getting up there i just can't i only can tell the truth i was just nervous uh seeing the camera roll around in front of me uh just understanding that we're still supposed to stand flat-footed and do the divine assignment that god called us to do so i'm grateful and thankful just for that opportunity uh and just looking forward to what it was going to look like after it was all done. So I'm um, just excited about the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And thank you for you. You indeed set it off for us. There's pressure on that first word <laughs> to set the tone. Pressure on the first well, and uh, did it amazing. <laughs> No, family. Uh, let's see. We, we've added more to the party. There's more space in the. There's room in the upper room. 
Uh, so we thank God for um, back with us, Reverend Hazel, who was the fourth word for us. And then we have the fifth word with us on tonight as well, Reverend Nicole Barnes. How are you tonight, ma'am? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Glad to have you back with us. And thank you for jumping on tonight. Uh, Reverend Hazel, how are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Good. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody's in the room. All right. Now, listen, if you just signed on, uh, empower the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. They are happening this Thursday right here on ESC's Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. You do not want to miss it. These are the preachers uh, that will be representing uh, for Christ, uh, for the kingdom, for Eastern Star Church. And I promise you, these, these women prepared. Uh, they are full of power and empowered. And they brought the word on uh, during our production of Empower. You do not want to miss it. And so as our uh, second word reflections, Reverend Janae Downs, I think you said it best uh, for the people. For the this, people. For the people. Let's talk about it. <laughs> this is for the people. Yes. For the people. Yes. Um, so I will say there is yet pressure in the second word as well. Um, it was a wonderful time and I really do appreciate the invitation to share. Um, when I got the assignment, then I'm like, hmm, how does this go? Um, <laughs> how does this go? Because as you know, um, as many of you know, with the seven last sayings, there's a time limit when you're trying to get seven sayings in there. Um, and so um, so there's the pressure of trying to make sure to complete the assignment in the time that the Lord has allotted. Um, <laughs> but it was <laughs> uh, but it was great. Um, and it is that second word. I say it is for the people because it literally is about um, how God restores us, no matter what our sins are, no matter what our backgrounds are. There's still a promise for us. Um, and so I got a chance to deliver on that promise. Amen. 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 And uh, we'll move to the third word and then we have a special selection coming up you all stand by for that you do not want to miss it but reverend barbara walker talk about the third word and, and your experience on um, with empower thus far from behind the scenes yeah it was uh surreal honestly it was surreal i think you know as i thought about jesus and the fact that he loved so much that even as he was suffering and dying, he took time to make provision for his mother, to make provision for the thief, to make uh, opportunity for those of us who would be left behind to come alongside. That was powerful to me that even in, in death, in suffering, that he loved us enough to be aware of our needs. And, and um, it's a reminder of how good and how awesome he is that he died for us. But even in dying, he loved us enough to care what happens next yeah yeah thank you for that thank you so much for that and this is good you all see this this progression here one the first word second word third word and now in the production this is where we pause and we have a special selection so we're going to have somebody come to the stage at this time uh to render to us all right so esc online bring on our special guests for this evening <laughs> Hello, are you ready, Pastor Johnson? This is where the song goes, right here. I was born ready. <laughs> How are you all tonight? <laughs> Pastor um, Jeffrey A. Johnson Sr., the ESC Senior Pastor. Hey, How uh, are you? Good evening, everybody. Uh, y'all know I'm low tech, so I couldn't get my Empower Her uh, <laughs> on my screen, but I'm excited about what's going to happen on Thursday night. Thank you for participating. I was telling our congregation on yesterday that whenever we feel like God is revealing something to us, somebody just uh, takes ownership of it. Somebody buys into it and then takes it over. I get a lot of credit for the successes we've had at Eastern Star Church, but it's, it's normally somebody hearing the voice of God and operating according to the power of the Holy Spirit. And now it's, it's you guys' turn. And I'm very excited about what's getting ready to happen. I remember the first time I was on to do uh, seven last words. And of course, I'm on every year somewhere in the world. And so now to get to sit back and be blessed uh, by the ladies doing their thing. And um, I'm very excited for you. We get to celebrate uh, the death and burial and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I don't know how long I've been, five or six weeks, I've been looking at the resurrection. And so you all get to speak about what happened 
right before uh, the burial and then the resurrection comes and to speak of what Jesus was doing for us and paying the penalty for our sins. And, uh, and I, I know all of you ladies um, and I've been a part of your ministry and your work. You've been a part of mine. And I know it's going to be a very, very powerful piece. And I'm very, very excited about what what God is going to get out of. Soul saved, lives changed, a spark of faith for those who have fallen away and ready to come back um, like Thomas. And uh, I know it's going to be awesome. So thank you for helping us with it. Thank you for doing it. I don't even know why in the 21st century we still got this issue with women. I grew up in a church. That was just normal. I grew up at Pleasant Union Baptist Church. That was just normal. We had women preachers and women leaders. And so that's why Eastern Star Church is a reflection of what I learned in my childhood. We got women on staff. We got women in le leadership, preaching, pastoring, and everything else. So now we got the seven last words. And y'all say it's making history. I'm thinking we've been using women for a long time, but if it's making history, Let's make history, ladies. Congratulations, <laughs> and thank you for helping us out. Thank you, Pastor. Will you still, will you, to that note, like you said, it's it's history, well, it's her story, but it's not. So uh, speak to that for those who, this has not been their context or their experience or those who kind of push back at it. What? How is this significant to the body of Christ um, for Holy Week? Um, for the church, let's just just speak to that. Well, and, and the Bible, how the Bible. Well, speaks. Here's the thing: God seeks to develop us through the truth. You should know the truth. The truth will set you free. The enemy seeks to destroy us through lies. So you have these lies. God doesn't call women. God doesn't use women. Uh, even if women are called, they can't lead men. With this is which. So what do you do with the scripture? <laughs> So you, you got to throw Deborah out of the Bible. You got to take Apollo's four da daughters out of the Bible. It's, so let's just operate in the truth. And what I've tried to get across to all of you and every woman that God has allowed me to come in contact with and influence with my ministry is you don't have to spend your time trying to prove to people God called. Just do what he called you to do. I got called when I was 17 years old. And y'all have. And you may have some idea. You, it's not just sexism, but it's ageism. So I'm 17. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do God's will. I get called, and people saying, "Well, you can't. God won't call no teen, call any teenagers." And so I'm like, "Well, what, what are you gonna do with Joseph, <laughs> David? You know, but so and me. Uh, so I didn't spend my time trying to prove to people God called me. I just operated in the anointing and the gift that God gave me. And so that would be for all of you just operating your gift. I know some very, very powerful women. They never try to prove to people they've been called. They just get up and do what they've been called to do. So, and I'm glad that Eastern Star Church has been open and receptive to truth. Yeah. If you could, if you could show us in the scripture, this is wrong, we'll stop it. But if we show you in the scripture, this is right, then you need to come alongside and embrace it. And we've shown you in scripture that it's right. And then uh, Pastor D, Pastor Daniel Johnson was preaching yesterday. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, what you all have been able to accomplish in ministry, your mentors, your professors, uh, the fruit that they've brought forth. And you're going to say, well, well, God didn't call it. Well, you, you better have a conversation with God because these these ladies are doing it. Last thing. Then I'm gone. This is for y'all to talk. I don't I don't want to talk. I got to go fix some some chicken legs for my grandkids. So I got to go. But somebody said when you don't include women, I just did a I just did a conference. I won't say where. Uh, it was a bunch of churches, a bunch of pastors and ministers. No females on. The only female that came in the pulpit came up there to give me some water. Mm. And I was, I was so, y'all have no, I, I'll say righteously indignant. I don't know. I was righteously indignant. I had to have a conversation with people in Indianapolis. Until y'all include women, don't include me. Oh, this is insane. Here's what somebody told me. Here's what I wanted to get across. And I, they know I said it. 
And I don't take it back. Here's, but here's the thing. When you don't include women, it's like trying to do ministry with one arm tied behind your back. What would Eastern Star Church, 104 years old, all we've accomplished, have done, are doing, what would we be without women? Women in ministry, women in leadership, women pastoring. You know, it's, we don't just have one pastor at our church. We're like Acts chapter 6. We got shared leadership, shared past, shared pastoral roles. So I told them, man, I'm not going to I'm not going to minister with one arm tied behind my back. Two y'all include women. Just don't include me. Mm. And, and you know what? They didn't include me because they didn't include me. <laughs> well, I, we'll, I, let, we'll let the Holy Spirit deal with them, but they know where I am with them. I'm born and raised in Indianapolis. We ain't going to be like that city I just left with mm. a bunch of men. Only woman in the pulpit brought me water. Mm. And I don't even drink water before I pray. Anyway, so um, <laughs> we're looking forward to Thursday, 7 p.m. I haven't I haven't listened to any of it. I want it fresh on Thursday at seven. That's what I'm going to hear. Uh, I know my schedule has been ridiculous lately, but it, uh, I, I haven't been a part of the production, not because I'm not forward. One, Eastern Star Church got to get used to hearing other voices other than mine. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I mean by that. And mm -hmm. uh, and this is y'all's thing. Y'all don't need a man's voice to make this happen. Make We've had uh, I've been in seven last words. We didn't have a woman's voice. We did. OK. Y'all have seven voices. Ain't going to be a man's voice. It's going to be excellent. Awesome. So I look forward to it. And I, I pray that I know we have um, national and international influence. And I pray that everybody from around the nation and world uh, joins us at Eastern Star Church at 7 p.m. on Thursday night. I know I am. And uh, I look forward to hearing what the Holy Spirit has shared with you. And I know it's going to be a blessing about salvation and deliverance and then when y'all get finished on thursday i'm gonna come back with the resurrection on sunday so we're gonna we're in, we in good shape I, I thank you ladies for helping us out i love all of you and i appreciate you uh reverend dd gray i gotta go fix some chicken legs for my grandsons i'll see y'all later all right save me save us, save us some till some of us gonna go to stretch so save us some for <laughs> sunday after church um, send right. my love to the family. God bless right. you. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you guys. very much. Praying for y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together in the chat and all around the upper room for our senior pastor. Until further notice, Pastor Jeffrey A. Johnson, senior. Uh, we praise God for him. And like he said, he'll say it again before he takes it back when it comes to supporting women in ministry and empowering women in ministry. And uh, we are so thankful uh, to have this space um, that has been created and to be able to hold together as sister ministers and serving together at Eastern Star Church and to have the support of our senior pastor and our leadership uh, to create this historic moment. Um, and as we reference that, um, to my knowledge, in 104 years, this has never happened. This is a first um, as far as the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. And so for such a time as this, as we said in the first segment, at this appointed time uh, for these appointed women of God, and I'm just glad to be in the company, to be in the number. And as um, Minister LaGuan Epperson said, to just be in the equation, to just be in the company of um, everyone to be a part of this process. So let's jump back into some reflections uh, as we encourage our family online to continue to like, love and share this live. And again, set your alarm, every alarm in the house on your phone <laughs> for Thursday night, 7 p.m. right here. Facebook, YouTube, Eastern Star Church Online for Empower Her, the Seven Last Sayings of Jesus Christ. And so now that we've had our special selection, y'all let me let him get out of here without singing. But <laughs> so we'll have to catch our song. But now we're back. So now let's get into the fourth word. Reverend Hazel Owens, uh, speak to us. Your about your reflection with the process, um, the production. Um, your word, actually, let's talk about the word that you shared and even how it aligns with with your calling. As yeah. Well. yeah. So, I mean, first of all, Dee, Dee Reverend, Dee, Dee, thank you so much for all of your labor and your work um, in putting this together, the advocacy, all of that. Um, this is unique. Uh, it is it was very special 
to do this not only with um, fellow sisters of the faith, but even with a couple really dear and close friends of mine in, in, in life and in the ministry. And so to serve in that capacity, just, yeah, it, it gives me joy. Um, the word itself, my word, uh, the fourth word gives me goosebumps because there is a real depiction of the both and of Jesus at this moment on the cross. His hum humanity, his mental state, and this still trust and hope in God the Father. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, so what I I saw in that in that word is how we can bridge the both and of how, the distressing moments of our lives, the. Uh, moments where there's abandonment, where there's rejection, and yet the father is near. Mm, and on. yet the father is right there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think we, we and I, I won't give it all away, but I do think that we get to see a nice balance of a both and here at this particular crucial moment on the cross because we're, we're about halfway there at this point, right? And so... Something is happening in the body physically and something's happening mentally that um, we get to see in the text. And so, um, yeah, I'm so excited. Um, and it does align very much with my work, not only as a, a, a minister, pastor, preacher, but full time therapist. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. thank you for that yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to God be the glory. Uh, let's jump into this fifth word. Ooh. Let's talk about it. Reverend Nicole Barnes. Yes, ma'am. It's so good to be with y'all tonight. Um, DD, well, for the sake of where we're here, Reverend DD. Uh, <laughs> I am very grateful to be a part of this. I um, am very grateful to be laid onto your heart to be a part of this. Um, your labor, um, just everything on the back end and what you put forth to make sure that this went through uh, will not go unnoticed and the Lord will restore and the Lord will redeem. And um, I'm very grateful um, just for your leadership through all of this. So um, that fifth word, when you first assigned that to me, I was like, dang, because I had done that one before. I wanted one I had already did. <laughs> but um, I'm grateful that you gave me something I hadn't done before. Um, and this whole idea of Jesus talking about, I am thirsty um, after the fulfillment of scripture. Um, it really speaks to kind of what Hazel was talking about as well with this um, recognition of Jesus 100% humanity and his 100% divinity and recognizing that after um, everything that he had experienced up until that point, um, he had finally turned back into self. Like he had asked for forgiveness for the others. He had uh told one of the criminals you'll be with me in paradise he made sure his mother was straight and then finally he turned to himself and was like i'm thirsty um so it speaks to the selflessness of jesus and just how jesus puts us first and even the fact that jesus thirst was a result of him taking a cup that he didn't want to take we learned that in the garden of gethsemane and a cup that did not even belong to him. Um, so he is experiencing this thirst for something that was not even his. Yeah. So again, it just speaks to this selflessness. Um, and I'll stop there because y'all just gonna have to come on YouTube and Facebook at seven o'clock on Thursday and hear the rest of what I had to say. <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful to have been a part of this. Like this was really dope. Yeah, cool. Thank you, sis. We appreciate you. And again, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Y'all taking me back in the moment. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there. So, Reverend Kyla Franklin, uh, the sixth word. Talk about it, sis. 
talk about it. It is finished. Um, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to echo what Nicole and everyone said about you. Thank you for this labor of love. But um, it is finished. Um, I love this word because um, I think back even to Genesis, first of all, where God told us that he was going to bring us a savior from the womb of a woman. And then here we are together doing this. But then I realized that blood, death were always a part of our reconciliation. And so what happened in the Old Testament couldn't do it. So he had to send a perfect redeemer. So there was no one else who was qualified and no one else willing to lay down their life for us. So he did it. And so it was just good. It was just good for me. And so, and it was good to share this with all of my sisters. When I look at you all, we had such a good time and the encouragement that we gave each other, such a serious moment, but a moment that was filled with laughter. When you, you, you can't even tell us what was going on in the room, how we just cheered each other on it, seeing all of our special gifts that I won't talk about, <laughs> but it made the day, the moment that much sweeter. Yeah. And yeah. it just, it felt good to know that you had sisterhood. Like, even if you didn't think you had it, you know, you have it. And yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's that good. good. That's good. It's real good. Yeah. Uh, I want to shout out uh, Ashley Norman, volunteer ministry leader, and also Erica Allen, and Sherard Allen and also Isaac Mpufu. Uh, they're part of um, the members of our ESC online ministry team. And so they were serving on site as well and uh, serving as hospitality and some production support and so forth. And so, of course, they were they were keeping me informed as they were, you know, serving you all. And I think it was Reverend uh, Hazel who said, oh, I'm not used to uh, somebody bringing me water and having water for me. And <laughs> And they were coming alongside and serving you all. So they were informing me and uh, of what was going on in the in the green room. And uh, and uh, I remember I had a chance to come to the hallway and I think somebody was coming into the room and somebody was coming out. And I hear this cheer. Everybody started cheering. <laughs> so you all were cheering one another on. And we had set the precedent on that night. I think when Reverend Tina walked out and I said, Reverend Tina Gwen, I said, preach the word. And we all preached the word. And then I asked Ashley, I said, did they keep it going? She said, yes, they did. They did. <laughs> so every time somebody left the room, it was preach the word, preach the word. And that you all did. And so even with our seventh word, uh, we were blessed to have special guests with us. Uh, she is not a stranger to the Eastern Star Church. Uh, in fact, she said she's not signing in anymore. We need to get her an honorary badge. Uh, none other than the Reverend Arjane Pitts Murdoch, the senior pastor of the Light of World Christian Church, who she was hanging out with us last week in the upper room live and sharing with us. And um, she sealed the deal. Uh, as she gave us the seventh word and we had the opportunity, we had a group text going and she sent a picture and sent her words of encouragement to you all. So I want to open the space up to anyone with a reflection, even when you, you received that message from her, uh, knowing that she was going to be a part of this and um, she was going to give the seventh word. Uh, just share some reflections about Pastor Janae, some shout outs for her and any other uh, sheroes as well, because we love Pastor Janae at Eastern Star Church. I know we're not going to be able to take her away from Light of the World. That that Y'all can forget that. But <laughs> in Light of the World, y'all know I love y'all, y'all family. But talk about that, of just hearing that message, um, seeing the impact um experiencing the impact and the influence of such a powerful wonder wonder woman of God, such as Pastor Janae. And anybody can jump on that one. I'll jump in. Um, I really, really am grateful to have been able to share this online platform, if you will, with Pastor Janae. She's also my sorority sister, but I've had a chance to share space with her, hear her word, um, hear her preach, be in conferences with her, and she is very, very powerful. So I'm so looking forward to this Thursday, um, but very grateful that Light of the World would share her with us. Uh, we always try to pull in some folks, um, and uh, so hopefully Light of the World will be um, sharing with us on Thursday as we view, um, but I'm excited to hear the word. I appreciate her presentation. Um, 
that's one of the major things. We don't always get a chance to hear women present and present differently. So this is what has been allowed to us and allotted to us this time to be able to hear seven different voices. Um, and so um, I'm excited to hear from Pastor Janae as well. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Anyone else? Um, I was going to share because coming through ministry, ministry and tra training here, um, Pastor Janae was the person I had to interview. And so I had a full, like she was driving home one day and I'm talking to her for an hour and a half and who she was in that interview is who you see every day. But here I am, I'm interviewing her and now I'm ministering on this platform with her. So it's amazing and it's good. That was good for me. Yeah. One more reflection uh, for Pastor Janae. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. One more. <laughs> Well, I just I'll just say that um you know she's shoo Pastor Janae is unbelievable. <laughs> so when I saw her name on the list, I mean, in addition to all the names here, and then her name was on the list too, I said, oh man, we I gotta bring it for I gotta do something like I got I can't I can't be in here playing <laughs> like I gotta. I'm out here with the renown, the national, the the in demand. The, I mean, she is just such. It's just so amazing to have um, that example right here in the city, like so close. Yeah. Um, I've watched so many phenomenal preachers from afar, so I'm just grateful to be able to have um, just the level of access that we have and just having her right here, but. That's some that's some pressure, honey, because you can't play with her. Yeah, <laughs> you cannot. She sets the bar and delivers. And we were just so humble and grateful uh, as we, again, this this vision was coming to fruition uh, that God placed her on our hearts to be a part of this. Um, when I tell you, as the saying goes, she's a girl's girl, a woman's woman, a preacher's preacher. Um, she is all about women empowerment. Uh, she lives that out. She avails herself when it comes to mentorship uh, and support and just coming alongside other women in ministry. And um, it, so it was fitting from the pulpit um, to just, as you said, Reverend Kyla, as a person. Uh, for her to be a part of this. And, and we thank God for her. Yes. And I promise she is going to bless you all on Thursday night. as she always does Eastern Star Church family. Um, you do not want to miss uh, Reverend Arjanae Pitts Murdoch, uh, Pastor Janae, as our seventh word. She's going to bring our seventh word on Thursday night. And uh, Light of the World, you all tune in. We know you're going to be right online with us, all right? So make sure you like, love, and share. Listen, we're at the top of the hour. Uh, we're going to come into the stretch here. You're tuned in for Upper Room Live, Making Her Story Edition. Uh, this is the empower behind the scenes. You all, I've been so excited tonight. I've been just stumbling over my words because <laughs> it's like the preachers say, you know what you're getting ready to say. <laughs> so you're just so excited. But I promise that's how I feel. Um, I'm full of joy and just to be entrusted with this assignment. And when you're just a part of something and you know it's bigger than you, uh, but you appreciate the support and the acknowledgement and it's so much gratitude for that. Um, it, and it has been a weight and a joy. I, that's the only way I can describe it. And so to segue with that, I want to pose the question in the room, uh, just as a part two, as we were talking in our earlier edition this month in observance of Women's History Month and um, celebrating women in ministry, um, let's talk about this weight and joy of being women in ministry. Uh, when you hear that phrase, uh, what comes to mind? Uh, I want to start with Reverend Barbara. Uh, <laughs> Reverend Didi, I know we've talked about this a few times because we had the uh, the honor of of being ordained together and yes, uh, coming in 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 my stage after so many years of knowing what my calling is and never having the holy boldness to fully step into it. I respect the younger women who like, hey, I'm here. This is who I am because it took me a while to do that. And it spoke a little bit to what Pastor said earlier about listening to other voices. 
more than you're listening to the voice of God. But with that comes a phenomenal responsibility. Uh, there's no way to take lightly the opportunity when you think about all that God is and all that God has done, and then to say, I'm going to use you to do this, to be a voice for me during these times, because each of us represents something totally different to someone. Each one of us has a whole different sphere of influence, no matter how tight we may be personally or not there's still different levels of influence. And I, I'm grateful for the opportunity, but every day it's like, Lord, I want to get it right one more time, just one more time, because each day is a new opportunity to be a voice, to be an example, to be someone that someone can emulate or someone can see Christ through. And that's, it's powerful, but it's scary. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Reverend Barbara, Reverend Tina, we want to hear from you. Can you speak to that uh, as well? The, this weight and joy, because you've been blessed uh, with different opportunities. And I think um, you are the, yeah. Um, yeah. You were, you were ordained in what year? 2017. 2017. And so just speak to and even in your years and your exposure and your experience prior to that in the spaces that you've been in, talk about the weight and the joy of being a woman in ministry and encourage someone else in that regard. Um, I'm going to start back a little ways when I went to school. I went back to school when I was 50. And so um, that was the first piece of, of struggle. You're in the middle of life's trials and tribulations. And then you're looking at ministry and nobody in your immediate family has been in that. And then you hear all the voices that come on the outside. Um, and I can relate to you, Sister Barbara saying, uh, Reverend Barbara saying that, um, you know, you have to move past those voices because the one voice you're supposed to listen to is the one who called you and the one who called you is the one voice that you seek after. And in seeking after that voice, uh, I was able to understand uh, first when I got to seminary, uh, it's okay to take a preaching class. I was like, I didn't come here for that. I came <laughs> here for this. And uh, just trying to understand where God was taking me and not be so resistant. I was the one that it's kind of like Jonah a little bit going the other way. I'm like, well, wait just a minute. Um, but when you uh, just allow God to take over your life and understand that yes means anything. You say yes, that can mean anything. And so in my anything as a woman, I have gone from being um, my, my, when I'm not here in this platform, I'm uh, in the health field. I started off as a chaplain, now I'm over a uh, national team for spiritual care for um, a different network, but it's still spiritually focused. And being a woman at the top um, of that chain is, is difficult, uh, plus a woman of color is difficult. And with God, all things are possible. So I, I have the weight, but you have the joy because you understand who holds you and you can understand the fact that God called you for such a time as this. I always hold on to Isaiah that says, you're my servant. I've chosen you and he's never going to leave us and never forsake us. So um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to carry, yes, the weight, but also to carry the joy because the joy is all about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I want to toss the mic right now to, uh, well, let me put the question in the space. And if it resonates with you, jump on the mic. So in what ways can we sincerely empower one another beyond March? Uh, that means all women, first ladies, lay women, fellow female clergy, Sisters in Christ, you know, we're observing Holy Week, but again, this focus and what made this a unique situation with this being Women's Empowerment Month, Women's History or Her Story Month. Um, you know, we we sometimes tend to lean into this space and March and it's warm, fuzzy and all good. But what about beyond March and day to day as we talked about, you know, supporting, influencing other women? 
um, in all different walks of life, not just in the church, but how can we live this out? How can we truly empower one another? Well, I'll jump it, jump it off. Um, I think one way is to truly support, mm -hmm. right? And to be genuine about your support. Um, we all have had our own experiences of what it means to be a preacher, <laughs> a female minister, what have you, right? Um, and some of us, as, as Reverend Tina, you know, alluded to, the both and, you know, uh, whether we are doing this full time vocationally or we're in other sectors of our respective careers where we're either the only, the first, um, one of few or whatever the case may be as women and black women at that. Right. So there is a shared struggle while the experience may be unique to each of us. So you never know what your fellow sister is really going through. So be supportive, give room for grace, be flexible, right? Pray for that, for that sister. Um, the other thing that, that I was saying, this is something that, you know, I tend, I think about a lot and, and I, and I get the opportunity every now and then as well is reaching back. Right. Mm. So I think one of the things that is hard is finding female mentors um, that you can connect with and, that can sharpen you or what have you, that has been down the road a little bit, you know, more. And so, um, but for all of us, like uh, Reverend Barbara said, we all have our own sphere of influence, right? So reach back to that young sister, whether that's young in age, young in spiritual maturity, young in growth in their career, whatever it is, and actually come alongside. Because I would imagine that for each of us getting to where we are, we had somebody that reached back to us. Mm -hmm. right? and so those would be the things for me. That's good. And then as you, as you stated or implied that then it's the responsibility because somebody did reach out to us that we reach out, we pay it forward as well. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else want to echo those sentiments or add value to that? I would add for, um, for us to um, accept our diversity. We all do things differently yeah. and it's okay, mm -hmm. but it's needed. Mm -hmm. um, how one person ministers to others may be different than somebody else does it, but we need each of those gifts. Yeah. And so many times we, I know, and I'm going to say, cause I've been, I think it will be 18 years in June that I've been ordained, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I remember starting and it was already hard cause men didn't want us to minister, but then the women before me sometimes would be like, I need you to do this, 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 and this, and be like them. And so they didn't accept the, the change, you know? And so here you are trying to grow and you're like, okay, that's not what God is telling me about me. And so you had no one before you to say, no, baby, you can do this. You can do this. It's not till later. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm looking. And so I'm in awe again, when I see each of our sisters here and what they bring to the table and I'm like, look, I'm, a, I'm getting some of this. I'm getting some of this because there's something to learn from each of us. And we don't have to be, you know, segregated or separated. I'm so thankful when I come into worship and I can sit down and my sister saying, can I pray with you? Hey, how are you doing today? Beyond me preaching, how are you doing today? Mm -hmm. yeah, we need that because yeah. we don't know what we're carrying on our plates and doing this. So I think we should, you know, that's just my thought on that. No, that's good, um, Reverend Kyla. Cause, and, and I want to add this footnote because I'm glad you referenced that. You actually have been ordained for 18 years, as you mentioned. And then I want you to speak to any women who may be considering, who may be new to Eastern Star Church or new in ministry or to church period, um, maybe coming from a different context and maybe considering Eastern Star Church. And so speak to that in your experience of, you know, getting connected with the ministry, getting involved um, the sister friendships that you have been able to create and develop and how that's been uh, a support to you and your ministry and your walk. Um, well, I've been at Eastern Star, ooh, I keep saying eight years, but I think it's longer than eight years now, but I've been saying eight years for a couple years. So I don't even know. <laughs> but I <laughs> but I got here, yes, ordained, but I said Eastern Star, it, it is a big church until you get involved. People say that all the time. But coming from church, coming from church split, church hurt, having to figure out my place. I said, 
But I always tell people, in your waiting season, it's not because you're just sitting there. It's God healing you. It's God, you know, just ministering to you, opening you up to things. But in that process, I remember when I first got here, uh, Nicole wasn't even Reverend Nicole then, but she was encouraging. I would see her in the grocery store. She encouraging me. It's just, so it was there. And I think getting involved, um, being still and seeing where God wants you so that, because I didn't want to just come in and be like, oh, I'm a minister. I'm going to do this. I didn't think I told people I was a minister. I just showed up in Sunday school, showed up going to Bible study because your gifts, they'll be seen. But then when you start doing stuff, then people come along and they nurture. So I learned from everybody. I love seeing Re Reverend Janae. I love seeing um, uh, Reverend Hazel, Reverend Barbara, even Reverend Tina when they're doing something. You, Reverend Dee Dee. And, and get involved with the people around you and say, hey, God is needing me somewhere. Ask your sisters to pray for you because I am older than some, but there's some people I'm around. I'm like, look, tell me what you know and, and you know, and get there, but don't sit because your gifts are needed here. There's much to do, much to be done. And again, it's not just on the platform of the pulpit. It's in every ministry. Yeah. If you're waiting on the pulpit, you, you in trouble. <laughs> I, and I want to echo that. I think that that's a powerful piece that a lot of people miss is they want the limelight. They don't want to do the work. They just want to be the one that's seen. And you got to be willing to go to work, what, whether they call you sister or reverend or Barbara, whatever. You just got to be willing to go to work because if you go to work, God will open whatever doors need to be open and he'll close some too. Yeah. But you have to be willing to work without being thinking that you're all that people get all twisted. What do I call you? Do I call you? You call me Barbara. I'm good with that. It's yeah. not about a title. It's about a responsibility. And I think that that's really, really crucial to our being united, whatever that looks like, being supportive and loving each other to, to a healthy place, you know, so that we know that we matter, that somebody sees and we matter because that all of us need that validation every now and then. Yeah, that's good. Thank you all both for those comments, all of you, in fact. And I just as I reflect on what you all are sharing, I see two sides of the coin um, where, you know, there are those times. I love what you said, Reverend Kyla. How are you doing? Um, that people see beyond and past your your title, your position, but you just as a sister in Christ, as a woman um, and see you and how are you and that permission to be human, to be people. But then also the other side of the coin is that with great power comes great responsibility. Right. I heard that in a movie somewhere. And <laughs> and so there's the other side of it that I believe too. what I'm learning and have learned um, that with this empowerment, with this authority that has been given, that there is still a responsibility to hold a standard, that you should give honor to where honor is due, um, that there should still be the respect because we we do it innately and have always done it in the tradition of the black church. We do it by default when it comes to our brethren, right? To the brethren. And so I think that's something too, that we hold to a standard for us as women in ministry as well, that it's not about being in competition or like you said, Reverend Barbara, that you're trying to have the limelight or be seen or this sense of entitlement, but that um, there's still a charge, there's still a standard, there's a call, a responsibility and a respect um, that should come with it. And how you hold that in balance um, makes it easy for what then people, um, not only what they call you, but what they see in you and how you treat them. It's not something that you have to beg for or scratch for or whatever. People will extend that to you when they first put their honor in God. They'll recognize and honor the God in you um, when you stay in that space of humility as well and in your service and walk in your walk worthy. That's our word this year, women of the word, to walk worthy uh, of the calling and in the calling. And so I'll pause with that. But uh, if there's any reflections, I see I see that. Uh, I know that look when I see that on Reverend Nicole <laughs> face and Reverend Janae. <laughs> so I want to toss that to you, my sister, because, yeah, let's 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 talk about that. <laughs> yeah, because I think I, I I believe, you know, when you talk about this understanding of the respect that should come along with it, um, that's because the cost is so great and mm. people don't understand what it costs, um, 
to be called to not just be called, but then to uh, try to proclaim. To try, it, We're literally talking about the persecution of Jesus. If they persecuted the perfect Jesus, what y'all think we going through <laughs> every other day? So I just, it, it's important because the cost is so great. So if I'm in a space where you calling everybody else by a title, then you need to call mine correctly. Mm. Um, if I'm in a space where you're utilizing that, then you need to utilize it for me as well because of the cost. Um, mm. So I just, I just, I, I, and I feel like that's why we go back to why is it so important for us and vital for us to have support systems because we see people cycle through in and out. We lose people. We lose our faith sometimes. We lose our mind sometimes. <laughs> we lose, there's so much that we lose. But the Lord redeems. And that is so amazing. And yeah. I feel like this space is a, a space of just redemption and like God's redemption through women. And I think it's so amazing. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Reverend Janae, S.A. Downs, <laughs> I, I want to toss this to you as we come here really in the stretch. I have my shirt on today. One week saved my life. Mm. Holy week. Holy week. So can you speak to what does holy week mean to you? What does it mean to the world? What is it going to mean to somebody watching the premiere of Empower on Thursday and and what do you want them to know about Jesus? Because I'll, I'll circle back to the top when you said this is the word. This is for the people. This is the mm -hmm. word for the people. Um, you can even take the time to expound on your word. But this, how does that hit you? What does Holy Week mean to you? And what do you hope it'll mean for somebody else watching? Yeah. So, um, again, my word was, um, depending on what version you read, truly, assuredly, I say to you today, uh, you will be with me in paradise. This is Jesus talking to one of the criminals on the cross, but really Jesus talking to all of us. Um, Jesus talking to the people who decide to put their faith in him. Um, and really it starts with a repentant heart. Um, there were two criminals on the cross. There was one who was mocking Jesus consistently. Uh, there was one who was mocking Jesus and then stopped. He realized, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm tripping with this mocking. Um, I'm actually on a cross next to somebody who is the king yeah. And he has a kingdom and I want to be a part of that kingdom. So um, so all of us who have come to the realization that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, that's that's us responding to who he is. That's what Holy Week is about. Um, it's about us really having an understanding of this um, triumphal, victorious God that we serve. Uh, we get a chance to really just take time to um, to read about his works to understand his works, to pray and to think about it. Um, we hear all these different words throughout the year. Um, our devotionals and all of that stuff tend to focus on what we're going through and what we need. But at, at some time, and Holy Week is a great time to do it, uh, we need to be looking at what did Jesus go through? What did he just endure? And he endured it all for me <laughs> and yeah. for the people. And yeah. so, um, so that's what Holy Week is about um, for our church. It's about that for um, for the people who want to be a part of the kingdom, the people who are looking on and saying, well, who is Jesus and why are people so excited about him? Um, from the time of the palms um, and them crying out, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord, um, Hosanna in the highest, to all the way to the point of him saying, into your hands, I commend my spirit. This is a time where we get a chance to study and understand the mind of Christ. Um, so I invite everybody, um, of course, beyond watching on se se seven o'clock on Thursday, to really, really take this time in Holy Week to read about what the Christ has done for us. Yes, thank you for that. And I echo those sentiments. I want to encourage you. Family, we thank you for tuning in with us. Upper Room Live, Making Her Story Edition, Empower Behind the Scenes. It is Holy Week. Uh, and we thank God for one week that saved my life. I don't know about y'all, but one week that saved my life and saved your life too. And uh, there will be an opportunity during the premiere 
that we want to get you connected with this Jesus that we are talking about, the prophet, the priest, and the king, the perfect sacrifice for you and I. And there will be even a time during the live, we're going to extend the invitation to discipleship. And that simply means we're going to invite you to welcome Christ into your heart. So when that time of invitation occurs and you tell the Lord, yes, we want you to share that yes with us. We want you to drop yes in the comments um, when you're watching that premiere. And in fact, you can do it it now if you've accepted the Lord uh, as your personal Savior, um, as Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, just through this conversation and what you've experienced on tonight thus far, uh, we encourage you to put yes in the chat. And if you want to get connected to Eastern Star Church, you can email membership at easternstarchurch.org and we will get you connected uh, to a church family because our pastor would love to be your pastor and we would love to be your church family. And we would love for you to join us for Resurrection Sunday service for worship with us this Sunday. We invite you and your friends, your family, your loved ones to come and learn more about this Jesus that we are so in love with, that we are so excited to tell the world about. And we want you to come and join us at any one of our locations, 915 at our Fishers location, 1045. Wait, let me wind, wind, wind that back. When you hear your campus, I need y'all to react on the screen in the room. Fisher's fam, 915 service. I'm going to clap it up for all of them. <laughs> and then for Cooper Road crew, Cooper Road campus, 1045. Clap it up. Clap it up. <laughs> We want you to join us also at our main campus, 1215 service. We want you to come join us. And in fact, also always online, Facebook and YouTube. We would love for you to join us for Resurrection Sunday. But in fact, as we continue to journey through this week, I echo my sister, Reverend Janae. We invite you to spend time in your word. We just finished our 40 day fast and we've been praying for you. We have been praying for you too. We've been lifting you up to the Lord, whether you are saved, uh, if you want, desire to be saved, if you need to get reconnected to the church, uh, we've been praying for you. If you are seeking a church home, uh, we've been praying for you during our 40 day fast as well. And so we trust God during this holy week uh, that you will have opportunity to again, we want to be your church family. We want to celebrate with you and heaven to make for you to make the best decision. I promise you, I guarantee it that you will ever make in your life. And so we want you to make sure you spend time in the word, spend time in prayer. In fact, I want to give a uh, seven last words, a seven last sayings challenge um, to look up all seven words. So you can keep up with the preacher on, on Thursday night. All right. <laughs> so we want you to go, go, go Google. You can Google it. We gonna let you cheat. Go on and Google. <laughs> and you can look up the seven last words, look up the seven last sayings. And when we use that expression, it means uh, a wise word or a word of advice is what a saying is. When we say saying, we want you to understand that terminology. And so look that up and say the seven last words or the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. Christ, and you will be able to journey through Holy Week and journey through uh, Good Friday and the whole Holy Week and just silent Saturday, Holy Saturday and Resurrection Sunday to understand and come into the knowledge. And even some for, for some of us, the reminder of what Christ did for us. And so we want to encourage you to get in your word this week, to pray, to get an understanding of what Holy Week is, where it originated from, um, its origin, so to speak, and how it all began and what it signifies. And look at each day. Again, we just celebrate at Palm Sunday, uh, their scripture, uh, Holy Monday, their scripture, Holy Tuesday, their scripture, um, Spy Wednesday, it's called, or either Holy Wednesday, their scripture, Monday, Thursday, their scripture, <laughs> Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Resurrection Sunday. You all, it's real. It happened 
Jesus is real. And it is a story. It is the greatest story ever told. And so it is recorded in all four of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so we encourage you, family, if you don't know Jesus, get to know him. And if you do, and you just need a reminder of what he's done, we want to encourage you to journey this week for Holy Week. All right. Get in that word. Get Spend time in prayer. At Easter Star Church, we don't have a, a dress code for Easter. Now, you, you're you going to see everything. I miss our T-shirts <laughs> for, for Easter, <laughs> for Resurrection Sunday. So you can do your T-shirts and jeans. If y'all want to throw, you know, get a throwback. Um, you can come in your Sunday best. We just want you to come. So again, you can look up the information on our website, easternstarchurch.org, and we invite you to um, join us. But until then, empower the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on Thursday night, a special, special premiere. You do not want to miss it. And we want to give a shout out again to the Eastern Star Church Music Ministry, our special guest, Destiny Fitzpatrick, who will be with us. Uh, these amazing women that you see right here on the screen, waving and smiling at you. <laughs> We want you to um, join them for the seven last words and our special guest, Reverend Arjane Pitts Murdoch, the senior pastor, Pitts Murdoch, the senior pastor of the Light of the World Christian Church. And so you do not want to miss it. And again, family, make sure to prepare your elements so that you can join us in communion as led by Reverend Andrea Lewis, our Cooper Road campus pastor, and Reverend Sandra Keith will lead us in that segment. And it was my delight to co-host along with Sherry Garrison for this special as well. And we shout out everybody um, behind the scenes. So make sure you stay tuned for even the credits are going to bless you as well. So we have special thank yous. And I dare not sign off tonight without thanking once again our senior pastor, Pastor Jeffrey A. Johnson Sr. for extending this platform and trusting us with this assignment and creating um, space for us to be able to share the gospel literally with the world. So family, we love you so, so much. And we want to encourage you to please like, love, and share this live. We pray that you have been encouraged once again. And make sure you encourage the women, all the women, the women of God, all the women in your life during this women, Women's Empowerment Month. And again, make sure to always remember Jesus Christ and keep him on your mind during this Holy Week. Family, we hope to see you real, real soon. Again, Thursday night online. Um, matter of fact, let me back up. Uh, we still have Bible study on Wednesday, right, Reverend Barbara? <laughs> I got to get all the announcements in. Reverend Barbara says we have Bible study on Wednesday, Holy Wednesday, Spy Wednesday, 12 noon, main campus and online. Wake up with us as well for Wednesday wake up prayer call at 7 a.m. And then we have noon Bible study, main campus and online. And then our Wednesday night uh, Bible studies as well at each campus. And then join us Thursday night in power, 7 p.m., Facebook and YouTube. And then Sunday worship, all three campuses and online. And we want to remind you the early bird registration is ending very soon. Reverend Barbara, what is that date again? For Thursday home. at midnight, early bird registration ends. Regular right. registration starts on Friday. That's right. And we're speaking about the Grace Connection, our first, our inaugural Women's and Men's Conference. And we have special guests, Dr. Jacqueline Thompson will be with us and Bishop Derek Triplett. There will be... Um, workshops and opportunities to fellowship. And so the early bird registration is this Thursday. Let Empower be your reminder. We don't want you to wait till Thursday, <laughs> but get that registration completed uh, before Empower or after Empower, but just make sure you get it done before midnight on Thursday. All right, family. So we want <laughs> you to be in the house. I think we covered everything. Family, how y'all feeling? Y'all excited <laughs> for Empower? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If I wasn't before, I definitely am now. <laughs> that was the whole point on tonight, family. And so we're going out on that one. Let us pray right now. Dear most gracious and heavenly father, Lord God, we give you 
all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that has empowered us for such a time as this. We thank you, Lord, for the humility and the authority that you have entrusted to us as your daughters, Lord God, to carry this gospel. And we are so full on tonight, and we are so excited because like the old preacher, we know what we are getting ready to say. So God, we thank you that you've already stepped into Thursday night to be a blessing to your people, to be a blessing to the kingdom and to be a blessing most of all to the word, to the world, because your word declares in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe upon him shall be saved. Lord God, and should ha shall have eternal life. So God, that is our mission on today. We thank you, Lord, in Matthew 28, that you entrusted the women at the tomb, that you told them that this message from your angel, the messenger, you gave them a message and you said, this message is for you. So here we are centuries later, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that this message is for us to carry to the world. So God, we thank you for the Eastern Star Church. We thank you for our senior pastor and leadership. God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together even on tonight in the upper room live. And we thank you, Lord, for what our eyes will see, what our ears will hear, what our hearts will feel, what our spirits will um, encounter. And Lord God, we thank you in advance for those who will say yes to Jesus Christ, that I want to be saved. I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. And God, we just thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the opportunity to come together in communion, Father God, even to be reminded to be humble and to love one another and to remember, Lord God, the agony, but also, Father God, the victory, Lord God, that was accomplished on a holy week. On a, cow, on a cross in Calvary, Father God, years ago. But Lord, we're most excited that as you came closer to the cross, you were that much closer to the crown. So we thank you for the joy that the story does not end like that right there at Calvary. But one early Sunday morning, Father God, we thank you that you were raised with all power in your hands. So we stand in tiptoe anticipation of what you're going to do on this holy week, Father God. And we thank you for Resurrection Sunday, because all oh, the joy when Sunday comes, and we can't wait to share that with our church family and all of our loved ones and our ministry friends. So God, we thank you. We give you all the glory and the honor. We'll remember you and we'll keep you on our minds this week and forevermore. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, family. God bless you. Make sure you like, love, and share this live. Making her story Upper Room Live, Eastern Star Church. One church, three locations, and online. We love you, family. Till next time, stay tuned. Thursday, Empower. God bless.